Join with me in this responsive greeting. God of every season, we praise you every day. Good morning and welcome to worship at Snohomish United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Janelle Kurtz and worship is the work of the people, so it is good that we are here and gathered, whether in this space or joining with us virtually at home, we welcome you as well. Leading us today, we give thanks Jim Bohm and Tom Lafferty leading us in our music this morning. And Robin Araniva will help us to hear the word of God uh, in, in our scriptures today. There are a few announcements that I would invite your attention to. You can find a little bit more about them on the back of your bulletin as well. There's a few things coming up. This week we'll be beginning the set up work for the Holiday Bazaar. I'm seeing Glenda nodding her head yes. Uh, that begins tomorrow and runs through Friday, 9 to noon. And so we'll be... All right. Okay. 9 to noon asterisk is how I'm going to say that. But so I invite you, if you want to help with that, there's still space to please come and help. If you have some handmade items that you'd like to offer to that, you can also do that as well. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say? I wanted to highlight uh, November 5th is our first small group fellowship time and I have been invited to entice you that you can also pet the goats if you come. So come to Ted and Nancy Lombard's. You'll have some fellowship time. It's really about community. Some folks have been asking sort of what's the, what is it? What's it about? It's about inviting us back into some small group community just to have some fellowship and connect again. There will be some guided conversation to help us in that, but there's also just good time to be together and pet goats. As well, there's another opportunity later in the month on November 19th, and I have been invited to entice you with some delicious food at that one. I'm, I don't remember what it is now, but November 19th is the other date you might keep in mind. Uh, other dates, charge conference is coming up on November 10th for those who are part of our church council are invited to vote, but all are invited to attend. And so you can do that in person or online. There'll be a Zoom link we'll send out. That's November 10th at 7 p.m. And that is, those are our announcements today. This morning we are starting a series that is our stewardship series. It's called a season, uh, seasons of stewardship a uh, time for all ways of giving. And it's based off of the verse in Ecclesiastes, which we'll spend time with this morning. Ecclesiastes 3, a time for everything under heaven, a time for every season. And so we're invited to listen for the ways in which we might give of our own selves in a variety of ways that we do that, and how we respond to the different seasons of our own lives, the different seasons that God has put us in, and how it is that we respond to those with wisdom and generosity. So I invite you to listen for that theme. We'll begin today and it'll carry us for the next few weeks. And so also one final announcement that I forgot. Next week is All Saints Sunday. We'll celebrate during worship. Uh, if there is someone connected to our congregation or close to your family that we might know to name them as part of our time, I invite you to give those names to the office this week. Uh, there will be a time as well that we'll have time during service to light candles for folks who we remember in our own hearts and lives. And so you might do that on your own silently, but if there's someone for us to name, we'd invite you to share those names with us too. And now at any time during worship, we are invited to worship in the way that helps us to best connect with God, whether that be seated or rised in body or in spirit. And so I invite you now for the first time to join in our call to worship and you can Stand or be seated as is best for you. For everything, there is a season. We, we come, come to, to worship, worship God in each, in each one. one. In the long nights of winter, may, may God's light illuminate, illuminate the, the way. way. When nature is stripped bare, we, we pray, pray the starkness brings clarity. So, too, in the winters of our lives, when one stage gives way to another, or our days in this life come to an end. May God's light shine to reveal what matters most. So this is the end of the matter. Worship God and keep God's commandments, for that is the whole duty of everyone. 
Join now in our opening hymn, number 383, This is a Day of New Beginnings. Let us pray. Most holy God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of our lives, you know how we long to make sense of our world, how we long to work to put it to rights. Sometimes in our striving, we forget to receive these days as a gift. Call us back into the spirit of eager anticipation. Open our hands and our hearts to you. Let us reflect on the fullness of life, its complexity, not as a riddle to be solved, but a gift received, a gift stewarded with love for you and one another. Then we will know what it is to worship you and keep your commands, no matter the seasons of our lives. Through Christ, with the Spirit, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Would our children please come forward for time together? Oh, did it fool you because of that? Oh, yeah, it fooled you. I'm glad it's not. That would have been unexpected. I would not have been thinking that was going to happen. But, you know, that's kind of related to something we're going to talk about today. So, good morning. How are you all this morning? I am good, thank you. I will admit I'm a little tired today. A lot, of, a lot of festivities have been happening. Oh, what are you excited for? Halloween. For Halloween. Yes, yes, yes. I will say that we had some Halloween festivities yesterday, so I'm a little tired from the excitement of that, even as you're getting excited for more. Good. I have here, what is this? A calendar. I brought a calendar. Yeah, I need to get on the calendar. You don't have a calendar? That's okay but you would like to have one. So this is a calendar. My um, uh, Kevin's sister makes these for our whole family every year. She makes a calendar and she takes pictures from the year before and then she matches them to the different months and the different seasons. So you will find in December some pictures of what are we doing here. Oh yeah. No, we did not find this at the store. I would be I would be really alarmed if I found my face in a calendar at the store. 
No, this one is some, something someone makes for us special through a website that they can make it. And so that it's a personalized calendar. Or maybe I'll say it that way. They, no, they got it through the same kind of place where you can order uh, like pictures, copies of pictures, and you can do things with them. So that's where this calendar came from. So you'll find in December, there's pictures of us from the last December's doing Christmas things, cutting down trees. Uh, around October, you were just talking about it. Halloween picture. Sasha's like, I remember. Yes, yeah, Sasha does remember this. She is in these pictures. But so I wanted to bring this up because there are some things that we know we expect them to happen at certain times. You're excited for tomorrow because tomorrow is Halloween. There are things that you might do. What are things you do for Halloween? How you celebrate it? You go trick or treating. Anything else you do for Halloween? You scare kids. Uh, you know, it's such a time. You're it's like one of the days you're allowed to scare people and say it's a Halloween prank. I, I, we might dress up in costume to go trick or treating as part of it. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh boy. Wow. You're having a Halloween party in your class and you're planning for the things you're going to bring and a mummy race. You know, this reminds me a prayer for all teachers. <laughs> a prayer for all teachers. It is uh, in, our, in all of our excitement. It can also be really <laughs> hard because they might be excited, they also might be tired, and you know, there's a lot happening. But so we know some days happen at a certain time. The scripture that we're going to read today, I mean, I think you're going to be in Sunday school, so you might hear a different one, but the one we're going to hear today in church and worship is that we're going to hear one that talks about that for everything there is a season, a time for everything that happens. It sort of means that the things that happen in life, there is room for all all of them, even if they're not things that we look forward to. And so there's this, it says in there, there's a time to laugh and there's a time to cry. Yeah, that's a really good thing, even if they're not things that we look forward to. Yeah, so, so it has a dark, so Maria's saying it has a dark meaning, right? We might look forward to the big days that we can put on a calendar, but there are some things that happen in life that we can't just put on a calendar. We don't know when they're going to happen. They come and surprise us. We might get sick. We might get hurt. We might get in an accident. Someone that we love dies. These are things that also happen in our lives, right? And we don't usually know when they're coming. And so this passage of Scripture that sort of does, some say it does have a kind of dark meaning. Some other people say it tells us about what life is like and the wisdom in it that we can learn from, something we can learn from it, is that there is, that in all of the things that happen, God is still with us. The whole community of faith might help us as we go through them. Because sometimes, I know in this very room, that there are some people who have had very hard things happen to them this week. I know there's someone else and others in this room who have had really great, exciting things happen or that are getting ready to happen. Halloween. There are new babies coming this week. There are other people who have had surgeries they need to be healing from. People they have loved have died that they're saying goodbye to. And these things happen kind of all mixed up. Cars have. I, I, yeah, I know. I heard, I heard that your car has uh, been totaled. It has died. Yep. I'm glad that everyone is safe and how that happens, so, though, on the other side. But yep. So these things happen, and we can't just say, we can't wake up and look at the calendar and know always when they're going to come. I did open to you. I did. We can put your birthday on the calendar. We couldn't put your car was going to die on the calendar. We didn't know until it happened. And there's something in here that says, you know, even though all these things happen, God's still with us. The whole, the whole community of people here can help walk with us through those things, so we don't have to figure out how to go through them alone. And sometimes that is the best 
news we can get in the midst of hard things, that we don't have to be all by ourselves in that. Like when your car just died. Yeah. It's good that you have some other people who maybe can help you figure out what to do next. Or your parents helping them figure out what to do next in the response of that. That they don't have to figure that out all by themselves. So even though life is like that, this passage also tells us that things don't always, it says things do not always happen for a reason, which is sometimes helpful and some, sometimes confusing. It's the most confusing passage of wisdom in the Bible. But I think there's still some good news in it that we have people who will help walk alongside us when those things happen. And it doesn't, so then that one of the nice things about things not happening for a reason, one of the nice things about that is it doesn't mean that you did something wrong if something bad happens to you. Sometimes we think that. And this passage tells us that's not true. So it may be confusing, and it may have some dark meanings to it, but it also means that some of the good things that we might have happened to us, we also can't put those on the calendar and they, we receive them as a gift. It's kind of all mixed like up. If you get a new puppy, imagine if, like, if you got a new puppy. Just, like, appear on the doorstep, yep. you would have no idea that. That's right. So. Plus, you win at soccer games. Yeah, you might not know that until you go oh. into it. Or you have a great game at soccer, right? Yeah. Or, like, um, if I was expecting you to win at soccer, you could say, um, I want that, like, in professional soccer. It's one team I support, but they don't need to get out of the net first, uh -huh. and the other team wins. And that happened, like, last week. Yeah. The other team didn't have enough players, so we could get thrown out of the game because we had to but that technically there, there you have it. You wouldn't, didn't know that was coming until it came. So here's what I hope that you'll remember, is that when things happen, we remember it doesn't mean that we did something to deserve it or made something bad or good happen. It also means that we're not alone in it. God's with us and the people in this room are willing to help us in all those times. To celebrate when we're happy, to cry with us when we're sad, and to tell us that's okay when it happens and things can be better. Can you say a prayer with me? Let's say a prayer. Dear God, sometimes we like uh, the stories in the Bible that make the most sense to us. And this passage is a little confusing. But in it, we also see good news that we're not alone. We have your love that holds us in all things and the love of the people in this space. And we have grace that leads us into the next thing. Thank you for that. Amen. Thank you, my friends. We can, you can go off to Sunday school. We'll put our chairs back and then go to Sunday school. Wait, no, no, this is what? What so other when I was done doing this, yes? this um, I swung my arm back and it went oh. under the chair. Are you okay? <laughs> okay. This morning, we hear the scripture that gives us our stewardship theme this year, Seasons of Stewardship, a time for all things. The reading comes from Ecclesians chapter 3. This wisdom tradition looks at life in its whole and determines that there is no simple proverb that can sum life up completely. Instead, there is a season for everything, and in all seasons, we tend to the gifts of God. Hear now this uh, confusing reading. This is a time for everything and a season, or sorry, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. 
a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and do good while they live that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. These are holy words for all God's people. Thanks be to God. I first heard this wisdom passage not in a sanctuary like this one. I heard it in a different kind of sanctuary, the kind I experienced on my morning commute driving with my mom. You see, I first heard the wisdom of this passage courtesy of what is known as the oldies station, in my mom's car. It came from the band, The Birds. And so it went, as you may know, to everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Exactly. That is where I first heard this wisdom. In fact, you can imagine my surprise when I stumbled upon it in the book of Ecclesiastes, which may have also been a surprise to me that there was a book called Ecclesiastes. But I was reading this, I was reading the Bible, I was sometime in high school, and I was committed to reading it cover to cover, and I came across this passage. And I will admit that my surprise could not outweigh my disappointment that there was no refrain, turn, 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 in the scripture. That's my favorite part of the song. And to this day, I believe that the birds have added their own wisdom to this wisdom scripture by adding that refrain, turn, turn, turn. You see, when we think of the seasons changing, they are constantly changing. They are constantly moving one to another. I think that there is something beautiful about that refrain, turn, turn, turn. It is true. It is often a dizzying affair to move from one season to the next, from one change to another, from the highs and the lows and the unexpected things that come our way. I sometimes think that it is this dizzying nature, this confusing nature of this passage. That's why I never heard it on Sundays or in my Sunday school classrooms. I didn't know it was there. It's not the kind of wisdom that I was familiar with in worship. The kind of wisdom that I think of as the Proverbs. The easy, conventional, linear, this causes this kind of wisdom. And there's a lot of room in our lives for cause and effect Proverbs. There's a lot of good wisdom in those too. And yet our scriptures hold next to it a space for Ecclesiastes and call that wisdom. Ecclesiastes, which dismisses some of the conventional Proverbs, Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. If Ecclesiastes had a refrain, it's not turn, turn, turn. It's vanity of vanities, all is vanity, which has confused scholars for generations as to what that even means. And yet, 
there is something still to be had about Ecclesiastes as a space for wisdom to speak to us. For what we hear in Ecclesiastes, what we hear is a little bit, it reminds me almost of last week again, it's not a map, it's not a next step, it's not an instruction manual. Ecclesiastes is the wisdom of one who knows what it is to stand in the dizzying spin of the world and of life and to do the next right thing. Wisdom to take the next step. Wisdom to find satisfaction, to do the good we are called to do in the days that we are given. Ecclesiastes is the wisdom to call that the gift of God. A chance to do good with all the days, all the seasons we are given. I don't know about you, but that's not necessarily the easiest one wisdom there is. And yet there's something to it that I trust. I trust the wisdom, and I can think of folks in my life who have embodied this for me, folks who have been through it in their lives and who still stand to praise God, to recognize the good, to hold me in my own grief, and hardship. Ecclesiastes makes space for that. It is a wisdom that invites us to be present, really present, in the days that we have. Ecclesiastes invites us to attend to the season that is before us, before it is gone. I'm actually thinking, I wasn't before, but I'm thinking, and I'm looking at you now, Tom, uh, there's a quote in the office where Andy Bernard says, I wish we could know we were in the good old days before they were gone. Ecclesiastes is the invitation to tend to what is before us, to the good old days before they are gone. Or even, in for some of our seasons of life, to attend to the hard, tender moments that are before us before they are past. to notice the season where we are, to engage with the reality of where we find ourselves, and to trust that somehow, somehow, in the swirling of it all, the Spirit might yet lead us to wisdom, might lead us into what it looks like to do good, whatever that good could be in that day. a hard-fought kind of wisdom. But for me, it's a wisdom that will stand, a wisdom that can come alongside you and hold you as we walk through life together. We're going to come back to this framework. I said this is, our, this is what gives the inspiration for our season of stewardship over the next few weeks. We're going to come back to this framework. But the intention behind it is that in the next few weeks, we're going to look at a different season of the year and how it relates, perhaps, to this framework, as well as what it means for us to tend to our lives and the resources of it in that season. Think about how we might give and live differently depending on what's happening in our lives, but all of them faithful ways of giving and living. If we look at nature, we know that in different seasons, Different things and different activities happen in creation. Creation shows us that there are different ways of things being in different times. A time for every season. And so there are different ways that we steward ourselves and our gifts and our resources and our time and our relationships based on the seasons we find ourselves in. A purpose, everything under heaven. And so this holds for the seasons of the year, as I believe it holds for the seasons of our lives, too. So throughout the next few weeks, we're going to come back to this, and it's an invitation to notice, pay attention, 
attend to what is before us in the season of life this day, this month, and to see perhaps how it is we might do good with where we are. Seek the wisdom of how we can give of ourselves in this time. For all of this, Ecclesiastes also says, is the gift of God to do good while we yet live. And so as a practical aside, I invite you uh, to watch your mail. Our stewardship team has created a letter that they'll be sending. So if we don't have your mailing address, you can share that with us, or we'll have extra copies next week as well. That should be coming this week. That's a practical watch your mailbox aside. For the rest of our time this morning in worship, the rest of our time is for taking a look at how this theme of everything has a season plays out in the winter season. When I was talking with the folks from stewardship and they had this idea and I said, I went round and round, I turned and turned, at least I did, about where to start. So what season do we begin with? There's four of them. I could choose one. They go in a cycle. It kind of doesn't matter. And yet, I went round and round and round on where to begin. And I perhaps chose an unexpected place to start. I chose for us to begin in the winter season. When we look at nature, at creation, winter is the time when things slow down. The work becomes hidden and interior. Animals are hibernating or they are migrating somewhere warmer. The trees are not, most of them are not having new buds on them. They are attending to the life-sustaining work to get them ready for the springtime. The daylight, of course, wanes. Winter, the night becomes longer. It drives us inside, indoors, where the work of sustaining life becomes reflective, interior, hidden from the wider world around us. It strikes me that this is a season that is the legacy-leaving time, the time when we think about what is the legacy we want to leave in the world of our lives. And that could be when our days come to an end. It could be when we're in the midst of a crisis and things become clear. So I think that winter, for some, is an unusual starting place. And yet, what I was thinking about and reflecting on winter is that it's not so much that life stops in winter. I think about this as a season where life really clarifies. There's something about it where if we will let it, the essence of life can come into full view. I was thinking about this. Where I grew up, I grew up in Cleveland. Many of you know that. And where I grew up, we had the Cleveland Metro Park. Great big park, forests of hikes and places to walk and wander. And in the woods, you know, where I lived in these woods, they were all the deciduous trees, the ones that lose their leaves. We have, a, we have some here. I know you have them here. But we didn't have the evergreens throughout. Every tree lost its leaves. I always thought that these were the trees that knew what it needed to give up in their maturity. There's a wisdom in knowing what to let go of. These trees witnessed that for me. And so I remember in the winter, it was always my favorite time to walk among the trees because you could see their branches in full, stretching out like a lung against the sky, seeing the airways throughout. It was stark. They were bare. And yet, it was the only time of year that you could easily see the full height of the tree without the leaves to block it. The only time you could see the full strength of the trunk that holds it up. The only time of year you could most easily see where the nests were. And so I loved walking among the trees in the winter, staring up at them, seeing them standing there, a testimony of the life that they had borne and were getting ready to bear again in the springtime. My favorite time to walk among the trees. 
And this season, it always struck me that the trees knew what it was to turn their attention to the most essential things that would make new life possible. That's what nature does in winter. Turns to the most essential things so that new life can happen again. And this is the testimony that strikes me. It's also the testimony that makes me think winter is such a great place to start for us a season of endings. Because I think in that season can be a time when other things clarify. They become stark, like the branches against the sky. Our priorities might become clear to us when the rest is stripped away. If we will let them if we will take the wisdom from the trees and maturity to let some things be stripped away to reveal what is clearest, to reveal what essential new life-giving legacies we want to leave with the days that we have. So why not start there while we still have some days left to toil and work and do good with the lives we have? Our Ecclesiastes passage starts in much the same place. For everything there is a season, a time for everything under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. Ecclesiastes is a poem, and what I love is that it holds these two together. It's not easy to hold those together. The poem could have as easily started with a time to be born and then gone chronologically through life, leading as if linearly to some inevitable end that comes in death. But to do that, death would get the last word. And in this poem, what gets the last word is peace. And so instead, Ecclesiastes holds together from the beginning time to be born, and a time to die. It's not to scare us. Ecclesiastes is not a fear-based passage for all its confusing bits. Ecclesiastes is a way of holding together the two that we might be free to discover the gift of God to do good with every day we have in front of us. If death is something that only comes to sneak up on us at an unknown time, to catch us unawares, we may not be thinking about how it is we do good with our everyday. We may expect to always have more time. It's not an easy truth. But I think there's wisdom in the truth that Ecclesiastes holds them together. It holds the winter season right out front. That in it, there might be clarity of what legacy and life we hope to live. What good we hope to do. So that we might have some wisdom when we discern which then is the season for the crying and the laughing and the dancing and the weeping and the tearing down and the replanting and the building up for the mending and the fixing and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully always for the love over hate, for the peace to get the final word. For peace to get the final word, we hold the two together, life and death, so that we know the importance of living each day in goodness and peace to one another. Last week, I had a clergy gathering where I gathered with all of my colleagues who I haven't seen in three years. We were together in a space. And the person leading us, Reverend Katie Ladd, she serves at the well in Queen Anne. And so in leading our time, she talked about something in a helpful framework. She talked about what does it mean for us to have the wisdom of faith that is death-defying, but not death-denying. And she went on to say more about that. Death-defying faith is faith that is clear on its call. It is clear on its legacy. It is 
urgent in doing good and seeking healing and making peace have the last word in every single season. Death-defying faith is faith that believes death doesn't get the last word, that believes springtime, resurrection, new life come by the grace of God. And it believes that in every season. Death-denying faith, on the other hand, is faith of the world all around us that would keep death out of our view. It lives as though death is never going to be there until it sneaks up on us, ready to scare us like a Halloween prank. It resists the winters of our lives and the call to, in our maturity, strip away that which needs to be stripped away to reveal what is essential and life-giving. Death-defying faith, faith gets caught up in the dizzying turn, turn, turning of one season to another and never, never stops to get its bearings. Never stops to seek the wisdom of what it is to do good in this moment, in this time. Never stops. Just keeps spinning, spinning, spinning. If last week I called you kind of zoom in and focus on the next right thing, the next breath we can take, the next step we could make. This week I'm calling us to the exact opposite and inviting us to hold those in tension. This week we zoom out on our lives. Try and stand back from it and examine it, see it for what it is, and wonder about what is the testimony that your life tells? What is the legacy your life is leaving now? And is it the one that you want it to tell? And then with that, in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, in your view, we go and seek in wisdom to consider what it is in this season then that might need to shift. And maybe it's we keep doing the same things. But maybe there are things that we need to shift to bring forth that legacy we hope will stand. So the invitation is for once you've stand and zoomed out, to let that guide your next step, your next right thing. The next way you steward your faith and your living and your giving and your relationships and your service and your witness, how you show up to one another. Because my friends, this is my hope. For us. I hope for us, even in the confusion of this Ecclesiastes wisdom text, my hope that in holding this together and holding the winter season of our lives with the days we have now before us, we might have a clear vision amidst all the world and its dizzying turn, turn, turning around us, and that that would lead us in this day and all the days yet to come. May it be so for us. Amen. Our hymn of response is going to be our uh, series theme song. So this will be the song we'll sing for the next four weeks. And we will sing Hymn of Promise, reminds us of all the seasons tied up as one in our lives. I invite you to stand or rise in spirit and sing together. There's a song in every silence seeking 
be seated. We've come to the point in the service where we receive our gifts and our prayers and our praises to share with one another. And as we do so, we share generously in the praises and prayers we bring as in the gifts that we offer, remembering that they extend far beyond what can be represented in an offering plate. If you're with us online, you can put your prayers in the chat and also give at snohomishumc.org. And we respond to the ways in which God is inviting us to give of ourselves and our lives so that we might leave the legacy of good in our wake. At this time, I invite our ushers to come forward. Blessings flow, praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. God, God of all creation. We can see the ways in which you nourish life throughout the season, even when it is hidden from us. Hold us in all things. Receive these gifts back to you that they might go to bring forth good in the world, to meet folks in whatever season they are with a word of grace 
the word of peace that gets the final word in our lives. All this we pray in the name of Christ and with the power of the Spirit. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Continue in a time of prayer. I invite you in prayer for these, the prayers of our community, beginning as well with one that went out midweek, making sure you saw that we continue to hold Jim and Bolm and his family in prayer on the death of his father, Francis, earlier this week. Lord, in your mercy. A joy and continuing prayer for Mauricio from Robin Araneva for Mauricio, who appears healthy after a car accident that totaled their car uh, on I-5. We give thanks for his safety. Pray for continued recovery. Lord, in your mercy and grace. A prayer indeed for the whole of community, for love and respect, and I would add peace as well, uh, to reign in our nation and in our communities, that it would get a final word over the hatred and division we experience. Lord, in your mercy. Tom and Mary Ayers offer this uh, update. Uh, Thanks for our prayers for Bob and Teresa. Her surgery went well and she is out of the hospital and recovering. We pray for her continued recovery. Lord, in your mercy and grace. A reminder for us that this is also the season. We talk about a season for everything. This is a season for us to vote. However that is that you vote, I invite you to participate in that. And I would also invite you in prayer too. This is a season in the United Methodist Church where we are going into what is called jurisdictional conference. And so delegates from around the region, the greater Western region will be gathering and they are tasked with discerning our next bishop and voting on bishops. Our bishop is retiring at the end of this year. So that happens this week. So I would invite your prayers for those who are traveling and doing that work and for the work that they do. Lord, in your mercy, a prayer. Let us continue in prayer with song. Almighty God, we pray for your kingdom to come and we remember that the wisdom of those who follow you is that we would live in such a way that testifies to your kingdom coming. We would let our lives bear witness to the truth that your love, your healing, your reconciliation, your grace and freedom and peace always get the final word in our lives, in this world, even when we don't see it yet. That is the hope that we have fixed our hearts and lives upon. Lord, I remember in our prayers, I'm reminded of one of the things I did learn in Sunday school, which is that we pray together. And in a moment, we'll say the Lord's Prayer that you taught us, but I was remembering how it is that we pray this together, not just one of us at a time, And it was a reminder every single week that on the weeks where it is hard for one person to pray this based on the circumstances of their lives, the struggles of their faith, that we remembered a whole community prayed on our behalf and held us, held that person in that space. So Lord, remind us of that. This Ecclesiastes wisdom is not an easy wisdom hard to say any one thing about it. It's all mixed up. A way in which life, too, at times is all mixed up. Yet I remember the wisdom that we pray as a community. We walk in faith as a community. We hold one another as a community. So that where our words fail, where our prayers get stuck in our throats, They are still offered to you by the voice of the whole body, 
phrase together. Amidst all of it, Lord, we remember that that is a gift to us. And in this season, we are invited to remember that gift, receive that gift, and invest ourselves into it, that we would be better able to hold one another when their words fail. Thank you for your grace that undergirds all of it. For your grace in teaching us what it is to pray and be with you in the first place. We've raised many prayers this day on our hearts for our whole nation, for the work of the church, for our community and how we might seek good in the spaces where we live and work and play, for our families, for ourselves, and for the unspoken prayers in our hearts. Lord, hear them and receive them. In your wisdom, lead us in the next right thing. All this we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord, remembering the gift of praying it together with our many voices as one in whatever words or language we know it best. We pray now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join together in our closing song. I'm hoping, Tom, you have some instructions for us. I do. Yes. Let's stand. This is going to be a round, but we're going to go all the way through it first. It's 2174. It's on the screen, all the words. So let's stand. We'll sing it all the way through once. So you think, sing every part. And then, then we'll, I'll give you further instructions after that. <laughs> Everybody on that side, you're the number one. You go first. Number two is over here, this side. We go second. After they, then we go. It's like row, row, row your boat. And all of us up here, we're number threes. We're the number three. You got to go. Robin, you got, we got to have it. All right. Here we go. Twice through. Okay. Here's the introduction.
Good job. Friends in every season, that holds true. What does the Lord require of you to seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God? May we do just that this day and every day that we have as we journey together in faith. Let us go this day in peace. Amen. Amen.